Alright guys, we really need to step it up for the next game. What can we implement to really take this to the next level? How about something that's not an SAO ripoff? Shut up, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry, shut up. What if we added an idol into the game that people could simp over? Come on, man. How low do you think gamers will sink? No, you don't understand. SAO is completely unrealistic. I just finished Sword Art Online Ordinal Scale, and I have to say, this may be the only way to get gamers to touch grass. As always, it's up to me to change the name of this anime to something a bit more realistic. We never learn to stop trusting people. SAO go. And finally, take off your glasses. If you enjoyed watching Useless get turned into an ice cream sandwich, then be sure to subscribe to both my channels and join my Discord. Let me give you a satire synopsis of this movie, which will contain spoilers. After Japan realized it had a certain genre gaining popularity, the augmented reality glasses were created. Unlike VR, you can use these while awake, and conveniently, all players who were previously stuck in SAO all got a pair for free. Which may look unusual from a viewer's perspective, but then you remember when you were 11 and got a pop-up saying that you want a free iPad and entered your mom's social security number so that you would get free stuff. Trauma free stuff. These glasses come stacked with features. They let you scan your surroundings, watch anime, pretend to touch grass, and of course, video games. The main game, aside from Candy Crush, is Ordinal Scale, a video game that takes place in the real world where you go around fighting monsters and groups. Yeah. This is just Pokemon Go. Aside from increasing your rank to feel a small significance in an otherwise insignificant life, people play this game because it offers every gamer's greatest weakness, free Uber Eats. Imagine seeing a group of these gamers swinging around imaginary swords. Mommy, what's he doing? Fighting their demons, sweetie. Fighting their demons. Now, let's check in with Jesus-kun to see how he's doing since Gun Gale. You gotta be him. I'm him. I'm slash him. You are not him. You are not him. Kirito runs into a rather large problem. His athletic ability are that of a high school PE coach. While doing a boss battle, we're introduced to the AI Yuna, who was created to attract more players to the game. And I'm sorry, but just having a cute anime girl who sings wouldn't be enough to make people leave their house to play this game. Wait! You you get a kiss from her if you win? Alright, where's the boss? VTubers have already decreased Japan's marriage rates, but if now you could get a kiss from your favorite VTuber, the rates would plummet even faster than Klein's screen time. Speaking of Klein, he gets beaten up by Eiji, the number two player of Ordinal Scale, who's attacking previous SAO players for some unknown reason. Meanwhile, this ghost keeps appearing in front of Kirito, pointing somewhere, then disappearing. On another raid, Asuna is fighting a boss who appears to be a boss from SAO. All was going well, until useless, pulled a useless, causing Asuna to die in game, which led to something getting sucked out of her. Turns out that when previous players from SAO are defeated from PTSD, they get their memories from their time in SAO taken away. After following the ghost sign language, it leads Kirito to the creator of the augmented reality glasses, Tetsuhiro who had a daughter who died in SAO. After leaving, the ghost who we now know as his daughter appears once again. You could talk this whole time? Poor Kirito, he's just so bad at this game. What could he possibly do? Sight! Of course he goes on to become one of the best in the game in just a few minutes because he's just so cool. AI Yuna is holding a large concert, which is a trap to collect the memories of former SAO players, which is going to be used to recreate Tetsuhiro's daughter through their memories at the cost of the player's lives. Kirito has a final fight with Aeiji, beating him after having one of those generic sword fight endings where they both just stand there after the strike. But of course a few days of training Kirito wins because he's just so cool. An event begins summoning all the previous SAO bosses, but Ghost Yuna tells them that they have to defeat the 100th floor boss by deep diving which they can do with their glasses. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yeah, sounds like they just wanted an excuse to fight the final boss. All right, time for the final boss fight. No, this is definitely racially motivated. At least Sinon came along to be useful. Wait, somebody's missing. Crap, we forgot about Asuna. There she is. At this point, the director was like, how many more characters should we add? To which Reki Kawahara responded, Every single one of them. Bring in the fairies. Why not the random gunslingers too? May as well have a costume change and throw in the cancer patient. 
But to really put a bow on this, let's throw in Kaiba too. Kirito beats the boss, becoming the best in the game because he's just so cool. So is this guy gonna go to jail or what? Now let's talk about the characters in this anime, starting off with Kirito. I don't know who this is, but it's not my Kirito. He switched from being an epic Fortnite gamer to the old man who said, Back in my day, we had full immersion in games, not some of this half-ass immersions. They made Kirito a no longer OP character, demonstrating that he isn't amazing at everything he touches, but like you, by truly applying yourself to something that you're bad at <coughs> for a few days, even you could win the Olympics. But, you know, bonus points for immediately reading Asuna's diary the moment he enters her room. Because, what's privacy anyways? Basically a nerfable tier. Asuna returns as the classic damsel in distress. During this movie, she's in constant fear since she's slowly losing her memories from her time in SAO. While this time for many was the worst time of their lives, they also have important memories that they don't want to lose from SAO. Meanwhile, most of the anime community has been trying to forget about SAO for years, unless you just have bad taste like me. I will say though, some of the best moments from this anime was when Asuna and Kirito were just hanging out. Best girl tier, Yuna, but not Yuna. Although they may look the same, one is AI Yuna, and the other one is Ghost of Future Past Yuna. She likes music. And that's about it. Not really much to say about her, considering she had as many lines as Komi. A silent voice tier. Yeah, this guy was a thing, I guess. Eiji was once a member of the Knights of the Blood Oath in SAO, who was in love with Yuna, which is why he worked with her father to try and revive her. Too bad he couldn't use his common sense to think, hmm, I have the most memories of Yuna from SAO. I might be a prime candidate. Debatably stupid tier. Shigemura Tetsuhiro the main antagonist of the movie, and probably the best I've seen in SAO. While I am a rather big fan of the Yandere Pito, Tetsuhiro may be the only villain in SAO who has an actual motive. All he wants to do is bring his daughter back, even if it is just a version of her that's formed from her memories. The ending was a real tearjerker, because for once you could understand why he would sacrifice so many people, and he didn't say at the end, <laughs> But, best of all, he got zero sexual assault charges by the end of this anime. Well done. Best dad tier. Time for final thoughts and rating the anime. When it comes to the story, they definitely added more emotional plots, revolving around memory loss and doing anything to get loved ones back. While it is better than the other SAOs, which consist of wondering, can Kirito get much higher? It's no masterpiece. Other people have said that if you like SAO, you'll enjoy this anime. And if not, you won't but I disagree. If your girl comes up to you and complains about her day, can you just sit there listening and give zero solutions to her problem? If you can do that, then you can enjoy this movie because it has more plot holes than Rengoku. For example, most of this anime could be solved if they would just take off the headset. I do think that the story was carried by the ending, making it easy to forget everything else that happened in the movie. When it comes to the characters, I mean, they're the same, but with different issues. They just need to stop trying to make Kirito relatable. He has a whole harem and is the best at every game he touches. Meanwhile, I'm hard stuck at Iron 3. But the interactions between the father and the ghost of his daughter had somebody cutting the onions in my room. This movie revolved around an idol singer, so the music didn't disappoint. The animation was top tier, which was done by A1 Pictures. I will say, SAO is the only anime where CGI doesn't bother me, since it makes the bosses feel more like a video game. While my anime list gave this anime a score of around 7.6 out of 10, I'll be giving a score of 7.3 unnerfed Kiritos out of 10. In conclusion, Hello, a bit of a channel update for those who care. You may have noticed, but I have braces now. While I didn't record this video with braces, I will have to for the next year and a half. And as you may know, I already have a lisp. And the braces are giving me one more that I have to work through. The point is that I'll be making less videos, but be putting more time into the editing and script writing. So less quantity and more quality due to my inability to speak. That's all. Roll the outro. Hello, Lunar Tunes Lunar here. Click here to check out my second channel. Click here to check out my recommended video. And click here to check out my newest video.